Is it what I think it is? It is a Megalodon. Well, what perfect timing. Oh my gosh. What a horrifying way to die. Hear me when I say Don't blame it on the Don't blame it on the Hey everybody, it's Mysticus here, and today I've decided to create my first beginner guide for Sea of Thieves. I've seen other beginner guides out there, and some of them were made a while ago before the new Shrouded Spoils update came out, so I decided that I'd make a more up-to-date one for you guys to see. So, as a player who hasn't been a part of the Sea of Thieves community for very long, I decided that it would be in my best interest to learn as much about the Sea of Thieves game as possible so that I can increase my skills within the game, and I want to share what I have learned with you guys so that you yourselves can begin mastering the seas once the basic knowledge has been acquired. And what I've done here is I've taken what I've learned from these wikis and sources and I've summed them all up into one informational guide. And there's quite a bit to cover so I've split the information into a few videos. Anyways, I don't wish to keep you guys waiting so let's get right into what you guys came here for. When you first begin the game, the very first thing you'll be doing is creating a character. Make sure the character you choose is a character that you'll be fine permanently playing with. I mean, you can delete your character but you'll lose all of your progress and it's basically like starting fresh. After you've chosen your character, you'll find yourself in a random outpost tavern. Here, free grog is provided at the bar. Also, on your left, you'll find a mysterious stranger who will talk about your reputation level when you walk up to them. We will cover what exactly reputation means later on, and each time you reach a certain reputation level, the stranger will speak to you about it. When you exit the tavern, a variety of different shops and companies will be scattered around the island. There are four different types of shops. The weaponsmith's shop, the equipment shop, the general clothing shop, and the shipwright shop. The weaponsmith's shop allows you to buy different swords, pistols, shotguns, and rifles. The equipment shop allows you to buy compasses, buckets, shovels, spyglasses, lanterns, megaphones, instruments, pocket watches, and tankards. I will later cover when the best time is to use each of these equipment and weapon items, so stay tuned for that. Next we have the clothing shop, where you can buy basically anything that comes to mind when you think of what a pirate should wear. Tattoos, hair, beards, eye patches, hats, belts, boots, gloves, shirts, trousers, hooks, peg legs, dresses, jackets, and belts, and there's probably more. Also, the more you level up, the more stuff you'll be able to unlock. Titles can be purchased here for zero gold as well, and we'll later cover what that means. Lastly, the shipwright shop allows you to customize your ship's cannons, capstan, hull, sails, and wheels as well as the figurehead and the flak. If you want a ship to show off, intimidate your foes with, or do whatever your thieving heart desires, that would be the way to go. Now let's talk about companies. By completing the company's tasks that the companies have given you to do, you will be rewarded with gold and experience that can help increase your reputation level for the company. You can spend money that you make at the shops. There are four companies, but only three of them you will be able to work with until you reach a certain level. These companies are the Gold Hoarders, the Order of Souls, the Merchant Alliance, and lastly, Athena's Fortune. In order to begin working for the gold hoarders, simply find a tent on the beach lit by several candles. That contains the shopkeeper and a bunch of scattered bags of gold everywhere that you desperately wish you could steal, but you can't because it's only there to make you feel bad. Then talk to the shopkeeper and browse the offers. When you first start out, the offers aren't going to be great, but that's because you are brand new to the game. Once your reputation level goes up after you have completed more and more voyages, so will the chance of getting better voyages, traveling longer distances, which in turn means that you'll be able to get items worth a lot more, meaning more gold. In time, you'll become a master gold hoarder. You will see a number of voyages that you can purchase, but of the voyages provided, you can only do three of them at a time, no matter what level you are. Every five levels, you'll be able to unlock a promotion. You can turn the promotion you received into a title by going to the clothing shop and buying the title for zero gold. When the title is equipped, the title will be displayed under the player's name. The types of voyages that the gold hoarders provide include riddles and maps of islands. 
Riddles will display the map name, while maps of the islands will only display a picture of the island and not the island name. The loot that you receive from doing voyages for this company include a variety of treasure chests, and each have a different value. Sometimes you'll get lucky and stumble upon relics that can be each sold for a particular price. The reputation system works the same for each of the companies. However, the loot and tasks given are entirely different. The Order of Souls can be found in a purple tent with what appears to be an eye symbol on the purple cover. Head in and you'll find the shopkeeper. Instead of hunting for treasure, you will be completing bounties for a variety of different skeletons. And trust me, there are a variety of different skeletons. And I'll add that to my long list of things I said I'd be covering later. The loot you get from completing these tasks are a variety of different skulls, each worth something different. Next, and probably the least exciting, is the Merchant Alliance. They ask their members to collect animals like pigs and chickens, as well as TNT barrels and boxes of supplies. Trade good crates can also be sold to this company, but they can only be found in random locations throughout the Sea of Thieves realm. Last but not least, we have Athena's Fortune. In order to partake on an Athena's Fortune mission, the player must have a reputation of 50 in all three companies, and the promotions associated with the reputation level should all be purchased. That's all I'll cover for Athena's Fortune, since we are only beginners, and it's not like we're going to be reaching level 50 for all three companies anytime soon. And that sums up part one for our beginner's guide. In the next video, I'll show you how to navigate the seas, which is essential if you wish to get your booty off of an outpost and go search for the real booty, or be lazy like me and remain at the outpost. Spend most of your time in the tavern with your tankard, drinking away your sorrows because of your fears of the krakens and the variety of megs that could potentially demolish your ship at any point in time. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to show your support and stay tuned for the next guide. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.